Okay, the title of this video is gonna it should be the Niners fans should be sick today. I mean, after taking in, you know, you know, they knew it was gonna be dealt or whatever and all that kind of stuff. But today they should feel a little bit different, and here's why. All right, let's go through the whole thing. Now, here, when I, when I heard yesterday, we were with friends outside, um, so I I, I just. Uh, was able to hear right before my Madden draft. So as soon as my Madden draft went, I couldn't even pay any attention to Trey Lance or whatever. I had to, I had to make my picks, man. <laughs> so after I made my picks and I looked at my team and all that kind of stuff, I, you know, start thinking about, you know, Trey coming to Dallas, what it means and all this kind of stuff. I listened to a couple of people, but then I'm like, no, 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 no. I got this. <laughs> The obvious, the first thing, the obvious is um, he's a better he's a better base than Dak Prescott, and I, I mean that's not that's not in question at all. He was a third overall, and lots of teams had him as a first round talent. Dallas had him as a second round talent, but even though at him at a second round talent was higher than Dak Prescott at like a fourth round talent or what I don't know what they had them but they ended up getting in the fourth round so the the base clay of who the athlete is um Trey Lance is considered the better athlete so we all think we could make this play work and we could do it we got something and that's all we want that is that is by far the best case scenario but that it's unlikely to happen, but that's what we want. And this is why it's going to ha- unha- uh, uh, probably not happen. Unfortunately, against some of you guys' wishes, Dak Prescott is a very, very good quarterback. I, it, it's in the real world. Let's just say that. In the real world, he's a very, very good quarterback. Now, in the sports world, he's a complete joke. I mean, you can't even say Dak Prescott's name without somebody saying some type of joke or something like that. I mean, it's just... It's just, especially at this point, and the narratives with him. I mean, there are so many. I mean, I've even heard someone the other day, he gets paid too much. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That narrative was like five, four seasons ago. That right behind that he couldn't throw down the field narrative. It, it was, it, it's been so much like every year. And this year is the first year he's had a high interception. So he's the biggest interception thrower in the league. One year. So the sports world with Dak is a whole different thing than what the reality is. He would have to come in and beat the reality Dak. I think I can beat out the sports world, Dak. <laughs> Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush beat out the sports world's Dak. <laughs> he's easy to beat out because he stinks. But the real world, Dak Prescott, he has the Brit beat out that guy. And if he does, we have gold. We have gold. Goal. If he if he's able to do that, we have gold. Now, like I said, Dak has put up some great numbers in his career. He's done great things. I think we're right behind um, uh, Kansas City in like offensive firepower for the last four or five years. So he has the he has a he, that's a lot. That's a that's a that's a tall task to 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 climb. If he does that. We are great. We're 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 head up with Kansas City. We're like, come on, let's do this. So that's the that's the plus side of this situation. So it's gonna be hard for him to do it. And then there's a back side of that situation too. From if you think about where Trey Lance was at, um, he was probably with the most creative offense in the NFC, not in the NFL, that, that's, that's in Kansas City, but in the NFC, certainly he was with the most creative offense in the NFC. And we were 30th in in uh, wide receiver separation and they were first. And you know you know what I'm saying? That, and that's huge for a quarterback. Dak was throwing in the little bitty windows and Brock Purdy was throwing into big old windows. That's that's huge, you know? So when you're in that organization and you have that type of thing going on or what whatnot, um shouldn't it work? <laughs> shouldn't it have worked? I mean the team that took Mr. Irrelevant <laughs> Took Mr. Murray relevant and beat us with him. <laughs> That's the team I'm talking about. He should have made it with that team, right? 
That's what makes sense to me or whatever. If he's talented, if he has talent, if it's real, if there's something real there and, and they gave up on him. It wasn't like we was like, come call him every day. Come on, guys. Come on. You got to give us Trey. Come on. Give us Trey. Come on. Come on. Come on. We weren't doing that. You know, it was like, yeah, he's not. Be- he's getting beat out by Donald. Everybody's figuring it out. Anybody want him? It, it was pretty much that energy with Trey Lance. So there's two sides of that equation that's making it probably not the the uh the thing that's going to happen but if it does it's the best thing whatsoever sorry Dak. it would be the, the best thing now let's get to the practical stuff all right um easy question who can get our defense prepared for jalen hurts the best cooper rush or trey lance <laughs> Who can get a defense ready to play Jalen Hurts, Cooper Rush, or Trey Lance? That's an easy question. And you know what? That's the NFL quarterback moving forward, you know, in Chicago, in Kansas City, in Indianapolis, in Jacksonville, in Baltimore. Uh, everywhere you have that quarterback that is mobile. You know, like, like I said, I'm, I'm doing my Madden draft. And back in the day, if you had an an 80 speed quarterback, you could do some things. You can run out of the pocket and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and today, almost all of them are plus 80. The only ones that's under 80 are the old guys. <laughs> so, uh, now the, the NFL quarterback, he's got to be able to run and throw at the same time. And our defense has to know how to play against quarterbacks that actually do that. And Cooper Rush, Cooper, Cooper can't help us. Cooper is extremely smart, and Cooper is going to be a valuable asset in that quarterback room. We can't let him go. He won games with his smarts, you know what I'm saying? And we need his smarts to 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 move move on. But he and his style of football is not what the NFL is moving into. So that's it. That's in my that's worth that right there. What I just told you is worth the fourth round pick alone. Somebody that's going to be our backup quarterback in case Dak gets hurt. That's going to be able to do some things that that um, that are more than just the drop back hit your first target or whatever. He's going to be able to run on the defense and all that kind of stuff and run a, a, a decent offense if Dak gets hurt. Um, and uh, and and if during practice. He's going to be playing as Jalen Hurts, as Patrick Mahomes, as uh, Trevor Lawrence, as all these uh, quarterbacks that have wheels on wheels and arms on, on them. He's going to be playing like them in in in, uh, in practice. So to me, that right there is worth the fourth round pick. We can go home. Good job, guys. High five. <laughs> High five myself. Ain't that crazy? Um, I'm not done though. I'm not done. I want to hop out myself, but I can't hop out myself because I'm not done. I've been clear. I've been clear since I started making videos th- this fall of how I, much I am not afraid of the Philadelphia Eagles. I am not scared at all, <laughs> at least this year, because I, I, I don't see them with their losses in the off season coming back better this year. Now in the future, sure. You know, I expect Davis to be good. I expect uh, Jalen Carter to possibly be a monster or whatever. We'll, we'll, but we'll see what kind of um, defense they surround those two guys with when they start to peak out and get to their, get to where they're uh, ruling things in, in, in the NFL. Um, uh, Washington had a duo like that. We survived that. We can survive in Philly. It just depends on what is in the, on that team. Like Washington, they failed to have a quarterback. Philadelphia is going to have a quarterback with those two, but are they going to have a secondary? Who, who knows? All I know is I don't feel like they're going to play as well as the guys that left and guys they're replacing. Don't. All right. But with that being said, I got some serious Niner fear. <laughs> That's real all up in here. I mean, I fear that scheme. I fear the defense. Uh, let's just say there's a whole there's a whole lot of respect there. And did they just give us the keys to their offense? Right? I mean, 
He's been there a long time, and he knows exactly what Shanahan is about to uh, uh, wants to do on an intimate level because he was their future. He was the guy that they were putting all this information, all this time, all this energy into, whatever, trying to get them to explain, trying to explain to them how everything you want to work. He's not some fifth wide receiver that gets the playbook and gets the playbook taken away from him, uh, and only studies your own play. He has to know how the whole thing works because you're quarterback. You're the quarterback of the future. So he is, has a whole lot of information, and the San Francisco 49ers just let that information go out the door and come over to us. So the next time we play the 49ers, we're going to be a little bit more prepared. Dan Quinn's going to be worked by a guy that actually run, ran that actual offense. So that's what they gave us. If I was a 49ers fan, I would be livid today. But I'm not. I'm a Cowboys fan, and I'm feeling good. And this is actually what we needed, just a little something after that. Even yesterday, when I made the video yesterday, I was like, man, uh, it was a bad week for Cowboys. And then we get, we get Trey Lance, which there's no bad way to look at this acquisition whatsoever. Not. Enjoy your weekend. Oh, and you, if you're gonna stay, let me let me see. the people that's gonna stay. Hold on, I'm gonna show you my uh my uh Madden team. Let me go back. Uh oh, it's being slow. Osiris Thomas Torrance was just picked. Let's see. All right, here we go. That's not what I'm trying to do. This is what I'm trying to draft it. Okay, I got Fred Warner. Middle linebacker, DK Metcalf, six foot four, a uh, ninety-five speed, ninety-five jump, crazy. Quandre Diggs, the Diggs that's in Seattle. Uh, Darren Walt Waller, um, still got eighty-eight speed, tight end. Javante Williams, I'm playing, I'm playing thug ball this year, hitting him hard. Uh, Jordan Davis, um, I'm sorry, like a hypocrite, huh? <laughs> He's huge. He's six foot six, three thirty six. He's a super superstar. He has a ninety six strength, and he's fast as well. I had to get him. All right, Jalen Carter, <laughs> Devon Witherspoon. Now Carter's the same. Carter's ninety four strength too, and he's going. He's not a superstar like Jordan Davis is, but he'll be there soon. Um, Devon Witherspoon is my is my starting corner. My uh, my top corner. Um, top rookie or whatever. Uh, Jaquan Brisker from Chicago to safety. He's he's going to be on strong safety. Tyree Wilson. We're putting him down on that. Th I'm running a three four defense. We're putting him down. He's six foot six, two seventy one, uh, ninety five strength, but he's a power rusher. So we'll continue to get uh, uh, um, a pa um, pressure on the quarterback no matter what. I used to have just like run stoppers right there but this year i got monsters that stop the run and the pass uh bj ojalari is going to be my my speed linebacker i gave him number 11 that means i'm trying to get him back in the day i used to give my, my number one pass rusher number 94 and now i'm giving my number one pass rusher number 11 when do you wonder why uh, and then I got Isaiah Folksky. He was Notre Dame, number seven for Notre, Notre Dame. He's more of a power rush, a rusher, but he's also pretty fat at, at fast at 80, 86 speed as, as well. So those are my two edges. I will build them as I go. I'm not expecting to win a Super Bowl yet with this, with this roster. If you can tell, they're all young. But in like two years, they're going to be really nice. They're going to be really nice. And my quarterback, I had to get Will Levis. I, I, I was picking at 22. All the quarterbacks were gone. So it was between me getting um, C.J. Stroud at 22 or Will Levis. And I think I got him like the ninth round or something like that. Yeah. So, so, and I, and I have to have a strong court, a strong guard quarterback. And there's nobody with 94, nobody with 94 throw, throw power except for like, Josh out the, the main guys and Anthony Richardson. That's pretty much it. All right, guys. I'm gonna go do this. I might go into the pool, but enjoy your day. Sorry, Niners fans. Um, I'll see you in January. I hope. Peace out.